Hey everybody, welcome to Joe Chem. For my seasoned vets that were with me all the way through OCHEM 1, welcome back. For anyone that might be a little new, welcome to Joe Chem. So obviously, I'm Joe, and basically I made this website because I love organic chemistry, but what I love more than organic chemistry is helping other people understand it. So the way this website works, or at least the way I want it to work, is that we're going to talk about everything under the sun with OCHEM 1 and 2. And basically we're going to kind of break it up in ways I think might be a little easier, better way to understand them. And then I have worksheets to kind of reinforce those concepts. And I have the answers for you guys, so because what's, what's doing problems without having the answers to check yourself. Okay, that's kind of a little introduction for those who are new. But today, I want to kind of introduce the topic of conjugation. Because we're going to kind of dive into the bigger kind of arena of conjugated systems. But I just want to talk about conjugation in this video, so nothing too overwhelming in the first one, first video in OCHEM 2. Okay, so I want to review kind of what a pi bond is really quickly. So I'm just going to throw up ethene on the board. Right, we know ethene is just an alkene, two carbon alkene. Alright, so if I'm going to look at this carbon right here and this carbon right here, if we are going to assign hybridization to both hybridizations to both of those carbons, right? We have one, two, three bonding areas, so that would be sp2 hybridized because I have three bonding areas. That means I need three orbitals to make hybrid orbitals, which leaves us one unhybridized p orbital to help make the pi bond right here. And honestly, same deal over here. This guy's sp2 hybridized because he has one, two, three bonding areas. That means we use, just to make it clear, S, P, P, and we know that we have three P subshells. So he's unhybridized because we only need S, P, 2. So he also has an unhybridized P orbital. And if I was gonna kind of draw a little molecular diagram of how that works, right, I have the carbon bonded to two hydrogens. We know that in this double bond, there's a sigma bond, right? Sigma bond meaning the head-to-head -head overlap connection between these two carbons. And then that unhybridized p orbital is manifested right here. We have two uh, p orbitals that are parallel to each other, and that makes up the pi bond that is in this double bond. Okay, so why did I cover that? Well, here's why. Conjugation is basically the concept that if you have a bunch of p orbitals strung together in a row, that kind of is a stabilizing effect for a molecule. And let me show you why. So if I drew 1, 3 uh, butadiene right here, so it's just four carbon chain with two double bonds, you can see that this carbon right here, he's sp2. This carbon, oh, let me draw two up there. This carbon right here, he's sp2. Carbon down there, sp2, and you can see where this is going. This carbon right here, also sp2. So unhybridized p orbital, unhybridized p orbital, unhybridized p orbital, unhybridized p orbital. So let me just draw on these orbitals. Basically when you have these networks of continuous p orbitals, I'll, I'll draw the resonance in a second, but these electrons right here in the, this pi electron system, they kind of get smeared and shared across the, the, uh, the network of p orbitals. And remember, just like we've talked about in resonance in the past, whenever you can kind of distribute charge over a whole structure, as, as opposed to just keeping it in one place in a static situation, that's a stabilizing effect, right? So let me draw some resonance really quickly. So remember, when there's resonance, that's a stabilizing effect for an, uh, a molecule. So if I were to move this double bond over here, I could kick this double bond up as a lone pair. And that would look like this. Now, I'm not saying that this is a great resonance structure, but there's resonance apparent, right? So that's a stabilizing effect. So the, what I'm trying to say is that conjugation, whenever you have these links of continuous sp2 hybridized carbons or sp2 hybridized atoms with p orbitals, there's this delocalization of electrons, right? There aren't just electrons in this double bond here and electrons in this double bond here. There are electrons, you know, kind of, if I'm gonna draw another structure, it's almost like they're kind of shared across all the atoms, as you can see by this resonance form, right? 
because we know the overall structure, the overall resonance hybrid of this structure is a mixture of this double bond representation here and this resonance form here. It's kind of somewhere in between. All right, cool. So let me just kind of throw up some examples of what is a conjugated structure and what is not a conjugated structure. So if I were to draw this structure for you, and I asked you, is this conjugated or is it not conjugated? It's conjugated. Because if you can see, this carbon right here, he has a p orbital, he's sp2 hybridized. This carbon, a part of a double bond, sp2 hybridized. So is this carbon, and so is that carbon. You need at least three carbons in a row to be sp2 hybridized. Okay, so they all participate in this network of p orbitals. They help support the delocalization of electrons. Conjugation, stabilizing effect. Lowers the overall energy of a molecule. Okay, now there's kind of a, so we can have them all be a part of a double bond, or we can have a situation where there's, they're not exactly part of a double bond, but they're still sp2 hybridized. So let's think of some other ways we can have carbons be sp2 hybridized. Let me just draw a simple three carbon structure for you here. Okay, so here's a carbocation. And remember, if I drew in these hydrogens right here, since he's lacking a bond, he only has one, two, three bonding areas, aka he's sp2 hybridized. And remember, carbocations, they are sp2 hybridized. They have a, you know, that trigonal planar structure. Well, because he's sp2 hybridized, he has an empty unhybridized p orbital. And this guy has an sp2 orbital, or uh, sorry, an unhybridized p orbital, and so does he. So carbocations can also help participate, well, can help link together these, you know, systems of p orbitals to support conjugation. And also, let me erase this real quick. I just want to kind of give a name to that type of charge right here. Actually, let's go here. So again, let's just say I had a negative charge right here, right? So you're saying, okay, but you know, if we drew in the implied hydrogens, that lone pair counts as a bonding area. So, you know, he's one, two, three, four, he's sp3 hybridized. And I'm not going to disagree with you, but one thing that can happen though is one of those sp3 orbitals, because the structure knows how energetically favorable it is to be conjugated, he'll put this lone pair in an orbital that can align itself parallel to the p orbitals of the rest of the structure. So if you can have a lone pair kind of orient itself to support conjugation, it will. On the other hand, last kind of type of uh, way you can be conjugated without being a part of a double bond, if we have a radical, throw back to the free radical chain reaction all the way back in OCHEM 1. We know that radicals are sp2 hybridized. These radical electrons, the one radical electron, he's thrown in an unhybridized p orbital. Again, that helps support a link, the linkage, the system of conjugated unhybridized p orbitals. So positive charges can support conjugation if they're all in a row with the rest of the p orbitals. Negative charges can align themselves to do the same. So can radical electrons. And also, this charge I've continued to draw, if you have something like a charge, whether it be positive, negative, or a radical electron, and it's next door to a bond like this, this is called the allylic position. This would be an allylic carbocation. Or if I drew this for you guys, this would be an allylic carbanion. Or if I drew this, this would be an allylic radical. And you can see that this is stable. Obviously there's conjugation, so we know it's stabilized, but the stabilization comes through resonance, right? The charge is distributed or it's delocalized, right? Because if I drew some resonance for you guys here, I could move him there, that double bond over here, and the charge is now moved to the far left. Or same concept, if I moved this electron pair over here and kicked him, uh, this double bond is a lone pair up there, the charge is moved over there. If I were to put the radical electron down there and moved one electron over here to form a double bond and moved the other radical electron over there, I would have a new radical on the left terminal carbon. So allylic, allyl, the allylic position 
is any position directly next to a double bond that is not um, a part, like a part of a double bond. There has to be some type of charge, right? There has to be, you know, positive, negative, radical. Okay, so you can see that its conjugation is a pretty powerful thing. It's a very powerful stabilizing effect because through through resonance we can kind of rearrange charge, and every time we rearrange, delocalize, spread charge out around a whole structure, that's always a very stabilizing effect. Okay, so this is just the first video, just an intro introduction to conjugation and the allylic position. I have a worksheet for you guys, so go ahead and hit the worksheet. I'm pretty sure it's just identifying our structures conjugated because if I gave you guys something like this versus something like, whoops, like that. See how one, two, three, four, five, six sp2 carbons in a row? And then there's a break. Because of these two carbons, right, the link is broken. There's no continuous network of p orbitals. So this would be conjugated and this would be not conjugated. The worksheet helps evaluate do you know how to identify conjugation or do you know how to identify the lack of conjugation? So go ahead, mess around with some conjugation, and then we'll talk about how this can affect reactions that we've done before and gives us a different mixture of products. See you in the next video.